Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Spirit of Prophecy podcast. Appreciate you joining me once again, and I hope you get a blessing from today's program. Today, I'm going to be talking about pride and insecurity and red herrings. This is a common thing that we are seeing in the independent fundamental Baptist world. And so this program is going to be a little different than most. We're not going to be spending a whole lot of time uh, in the scriptures or uh, teach anything specific, even though I am going to address one prophetic subject about this idea of multiple raptures. Uh, a lot of times in the pre-trib world, uh, they love to teach about how many raptures does the Bible actually teach. And we're going to get into that. And I'm going to show you why they like to do this and where they are right, but also where they are wrong and how the whole point of that, it is a distraction from the fact that 1 Thessalonians 4 and Matthew 24 are for sure both rapture passages, but I believe they are the same. They claim another, which sounds ridiculous when you say two raptures, that sounds kind of ridiculous. So the way they do it is they teach, well, actually, there's way more than two. Let's show you from the scriptures. I'm going to show you why that's such a foolish argument and what they're doing, how it's a distraction. But I want to talk about this pride and insecurity. And then I'm also going to play some clips from a podcast from a YouTube channel called KJV Bible Scope, where there were some pretty serious uh, accusations and charges made against me accusing me of doing something that I work very hard on not doing in this program. And so when I saw this, uh, this bothered me greatly because I thought, wow, I hope I didn't actually do that because I am capable of getting in the flesh and violating some of my own principles sometimes. So I went back, I checked the podcast they were addressing, absolute lie. And I will present the evidence. I will leave a link to their video as well as a link to the video that they were addressing. And you will see that uh, it was an absolute lie. But what was fascinating to me as I watched this particular program is it was apparent that this guy, while he was lying through his teeth and his facts could not be any further from the truth, that it was a lie in sincerity. And the, re the reality was his pride and his insecurity was oozing out of him, and therefore he did not know that he was lying. Now, for those who might just think I'm mean, I have reached out to this individual. I, have e I, I reached out to him through Messenger, email. He responded to my email, said he is not interested in coming on the program. I just wanted to talk to him privately. I gave him my phone number, and he has no interest in talking to me. He's done with me. And... I won't read the entire uh, private uh, correspondence, but I was I was blunt. I was to the point. I was like, "Hey, I want to talk to you. Uh, you lied about me," and uh, he he refused to do it. And right there, that is another common thing in a lot of independent fundamental Baptists is because of their pride and insecurity. They will get up and they will talk big. They will thump their chest. They will publicly call out other people, but they will not handle things man to man. They're not capable of doing that. And I remember several years ago, I, I remember watching a situation where a Baptist preacher was publicly going after another preacher who was not well known, got this individual a whole lot of attention. And then when that individual reached out to him, wanting to talk to him, the pastor wouldn't talk to him. And I thought that was ridiculous. How can you publicly go after somebody, give somebody all this public exposure that they weren't asking for, and then when they would like to talk to you about it, you refuse. I, th I thought that was pretty off-putting, and I remember when I saw that, I said, I don't ever want to do that. If I publicly talk about somebody, now I, I have taken the position that I will have them on the program, but a lot of people, I understand why they wouldn't want to do that. You know, I'm, then it might motivate me too to just call people out, hoping they'll come on the program, knowing that will get me attention. But it, listen, this is also my policy. If I speak about you publicly, I, I will let you come on the platform if that's what you so choose, but I will also allow you to privately talk to me. And if you want to tell me off and say what you've got to say, you're allowed to do that. I should not be using your name, getting attention, while not being willing to allow you to correct the record if you so feel that it needs to be done. 
I think that type of thing is weak, lame, and cowardly, and I want nothing to do with it. And uh, call me out if it ever looks like I am doing that in any way because I don't want to look like people like this. Uh, I, I don't have any respect for them. I think it's wrong. Now, I, I do want to play a clip, though, because I mentioned pride and insecurity because a call, it was over two years ago. Um, I had a situation where there was a, a pastor. I don't. I think he was an assistant pastor at the time. I believe now he is a pastor, if I'm not mistaken. And this guy is another one who just oozes with insecurity. And he was publicly slandering me, uh, like a lot of pre-tribbers do, uh, because he couldn't uh, debunk my arguments about Israel, the rapture. He just calls me an anti-Semite, which is absolutely ridiculous. Anybody who watches this program, anybody who knows me personally, knows that I am the furthest thing from an anti-Semite. But I will preach the truth of the Bible. And so, um, Pastor Guy Boma, a pastor in Pennsylvania, who does not agree with me about the Jews and about uh, the rapture, he called this guy out for his slander against me. That is very rare that you see that type of thing in the independent fundamental Baptist world where they will call out their own people who are aligned with them against opposition. But I've said this before, and I'll say it again, that it does not help our side for when someone on our side misrepresents another person's position. And, uh, and so I think we ought to call it out when our side misrepresents the other side. And Pastor Beaumont absolutely did that. And it kind of Painted, it, you know, it forced uh, this guy Peter to come on my program and address these things, and he ended up looking very bad. And it, it, I mean, it was an ultimate failure. And so after we did that live stream, or during that live stream, Pastor Beaumont con uh, contacted me and wanted to come on and talk about it, and we did. I'll leave a link to that video too, but I do want to play this one clip because in this clip he referred to the pride and insecurity in the IV. And it really stuck with me. And I realized this is a huge problem. And this is why they do a lot of ridiculous things that they do. And so uh, watch this clip. The two biggest, I've said this now for a couple of decades, the two biggest flaws in the IFB movement are pride and insecurity. Mm -hmm. And until we're willing to A, admit that we're not as great as we think we are and be not get butt hurt when somebody says that mm -hmm. it'll be a great day for us as preachers all right and so i mean what he said there was so true because here's the thing on this program everyone who watches this program knows i have a wide variety of people that come on this program and we almost Always. In fact, I think on this particular program, it's probably always been a good and productive conversation. I'm always polite. I'm always cordial. There are things that I think need to be discussed. And so, again, I understand I am not saying everyone in the pre-trib world is like this. Obviously, I have guys like Pastor Beaumont. I've had other pre-tribbers come on this program. And uh, so and these but these guys are the exception. And I am drawn to those people. I like those people. I get along with those people. I'm friends with those people, even though we disagree. I genuinely love those people. And it's like, and for me, I strongly desire to have good, productive conversations. I want to be challenged. But here's the thing. In the, a lot of the IFB world, it's so interesting the way they respond to any type of critique. Now, the video we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be showing you here, they are referring to a video where I responded to just one chapter in the book, That Blessed Hope by Pastor James Knox. I was very kind in that. I, I did not do any name calling. I, I was civil, but I did challenge the arguments that were used. I did, I believe, debunk many of the arguments in there. That is not an attack to do that kind of thing. Why are we writing books if they can't be critiqued? Now, it wasn't Pastor Knox that had a problem with critique. I don't know what he thinks about it. Even I don't even know if he knows about it. However, the individual uh, on this video is on staff at his church and is a member of his church. 
And it was astounding to listen to what he was saying. And I thought, how could he listen to that program and come to these conclusions? And then once again, I realized this is pride and insecurity. He heard me. I mean, there, there were something, a couple of points that I addressed that it's like, yeah, some of that's tough. I wouldn't say that I, I wouldn't even say I completely debunked that one point, but there were several that I did that there is absolutely no doubt. I showed several clear contradictions and I get it. That's uncomfortable when you are challenged and when you are proven wrong, but it is not an attack. There was no ad hominem and we need to be willing, especially if we're going to put things out publicly to allow others to publicly criticize us without us getting all bent out of shape, having a persecution complex uh, another pastor that I addressed some of his videos was Pastor Ted Alexander. I, I referenced some of his videos, and he acted like he was just under severe attack from me. And the funny thing is, I have talked to multiple people on his side theologically, friends of his, who also watched those videos, and they didn't think I attacked him. You know why? Because I didn't attack him. I debunked the arguments. I critiqued the arguments on a public video that he put out for YouTube. So do people in the IFB think that they are above being questioned? Because that's the way many are acting. And absolutely, when I put these things out, I expect them to be critiqued. But I also hope people will be honest in their representations. I hope that, and this individual absolutely was the furthest thing from that. And so right here is the YouTube channel. Uh, it's called KJV Bible Scope. This is brother Edward uh, Worth is his name. He's an office manager of the Bible Baptist Church of Deland, Florida under Pastor James Knox. And he's got James Knox stuff all over here. He's got a link to James Knox website. There were multiple references to James Knox in this program. So yet he had mentioned how James Knox was his pastor. So this guy's actually on staff uh, at this church. So I would hope Pastor Knox would not be okay with one of his staff members just lying about somebody. But here's the thing. If he has a problem with pride and insecurity, and I do not know Pastor Knox hardly at all. I've seen a few of his videos and I've read this book. So I have... Uh, I, I have nothing really to say about him personally. In fact, they even bring that up. He doesn't know Pastor Knox. Yeah, I said in that video, I don't know Pastor Knox. I don't have anything personal against him. I can't say anything uh, negative about his character. Um, and Nor am I interested in finding out anything negative about his character. I'm just interested in a conversation on the subject of the Preacher of Rapture. And I critiqued his book. So uh, that is not an attack. Now, the thing is, because I'm a post-tribber, am I the enemy? Because many people, while they know it's wrong to lie and slander, for some reason it's okay if it's opposition, if it's the enemy. And, that, and understand, this mentality of they're my enemy because they're different than me, that is also a result of pride and insecurity. Often you will have women being that way, that they uh, or teenagers being that way because somebody, you know, they think someone has a negative thought or somebody criticizes them. The response is always, they hate me. These people, they, ju they just hate me. Well, wait a minute. Maybe what they said about you was right. Maybe you were wrong in this situation. Maybe, you know, if it's uh, maybe they, they criticize how you're dressed. Maybe you were dressed ugly. Okay. I, I'm not saying they should say that, but somebody making a critique of you, pointing out a flaw in you, does not necessarily mean they hate you. The kids will say that about their teachers in the school. They will say that about different authority figures, that they hate me because they corrected me. That is very juvenile. That, and that is a result of pride and insecurity. And because of the fact that I am a post-trib guy, for many in the IFB world, because of their pride and their insecurity, I am perceived as an enemy. And therefore, whatever you want to say goes. I've seen it in crowds that are real big about reprobates. 
they will often put the reprobate label on somebody. Here we refer to it as reprobating. And we say that making fun of this process of putting the reprobate label on people. And they do that because according to their teaching too, if somebody's reprobate, you're allowed to hate them. And therefore you can call them whatever you want. But listen, we shouldn't even make railing accusations against the devil. We don't, we shouldn't lie about anybody. And we don't need to lie about the devil. There's plenty of negative things to say. And if somebody is really bad, you know, stick to those things. Don't lie, don't rail, don't slander. But again, I highly doubt, even though I called this, or I contacted this person trying to give him a chance to talk to me, trying to give him a chance to make it right, they didn't even want to. He has no interest in finding out if he was wrong, checking up on any of these things. He responded too quick to be able to go back, check the video, to see if I did say the things that he accused me of saying. Uh, he, he responded right away. He just has decided I'm the enemy, and therefore he's not concerned if he lied. Now, Pastor Knox, I don't... From what I've seen of Pastor Knox, he seems like a confident man from a few videos of his that I've watched. So I would be shocked if he would be okay with one of his staff members lying the way he did. But again, if he's insecure in his position on the pre-trib, if he has seen the video where I thoroughly debunked this chapter, I'm afraid the pride and insecurity is going to set in. And there will be no getting this right. But I'm calling on Edward Worth to make this right. I even invited him on the program. And he is not interested. I don't like I don't like lies. I don't like liars. I think it is a shameful thing. And I think it's bad for the cause of Christ. And even if you're right, it's bad. Now, it's okay, you, because you're in opposition to me on the pre-trib thing, it kind of helps my cause to show this type of thing. But at the same time, too, from everything I have heard from him and what we're going to see in this video... This is a guy that I would consider a brother. So I don't want him to look bad. What I would like for him to do, though, is get this right. Because this type of tactic, too, and I'm pointing this out, this is very common in the IFB, and it is because of pride and insecurity. And people, while they often struggle to see their own problems, it is easier to see other people's. So I'm going to show you this, guys. And if you, if you believe this is in you in any way, you need to get it out of you because this is going to... Uh, this is going to hurt you in the long run. So let's go ahead and watch just a few different clips of this video. And I do want to respond to some of the things that are said. So here's the question for the evening. NIFB Pastor Tommy McMurtry. Uh, I guess NIFB just means, excuse me, New Independent Fundamental Baptist Pastor Tommy McMurtry, a post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture defender. Hello, Brother Ed and Mike. Recently, Tommy McMurtry did a response video against James Knox's book, That That Blessed Hope, trying to refute the pre-tribulation rapture view that James Knox affirms. Okay, so my first problem, I forgot who it was that left that uh, comment to him. He had commented on my video, which is how I knew about this. Why did you say new IFB pastor? How many ways do I have to say I am not in the new IFB? And maybe that's one of the reasons this guy got so hostile so fast and so easily because, again, you know, he just associated me with a crowd that he probably perceives as enemy as enemies and did not actually judge the content or the individual at all. Got to watch out for that kind of thing. That's wrong. But this isn't his fault, okay? I'm not calling out Brother Ed for this. I'm calling out whoever left the comment. Stop putting that label on me. I want it off. I, wa I want it off. It does not fit. And so um, I just want to set the record straight on that. I am not New IV. And let, uh, I don't know the name of this other guy, but I did want, I have to play this comment because this, this comment here is really funny. So... Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Mike because he got dibs on this one. Go ahead. Hey man. Well, first of all, Brother James Knox did a great study on the rapture. It's available <laughs> on YouTube. 18 lessons. It'll answer all your questions about what the Bible says concerning the rapture. James Knox sermon, sermons on YouTube. Think a little commercial there. Everything that I'm going to give you tonight, pretty much everything came out of two books that Brother James Knox wrote. The book on prophecy and the Blessed Hope. The Blessed Hope book is what that man's video was um, all about. 
Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't watch the video. When you tell me that someone disagrees with scripture, I'm not going to watch the video. Point is for me to spend time watching somebody that doesn't agree with God's word. I don't want to argue with somebody. I, I got only so many hours in a day, and I want to study God's pure word. I don't want to watch a video of somebody arguing against God's word. Okay, so you heard that. So he did not watch the video, but in that vi because he heard in that video, I was debunking this book. I therefore do not agree with God's word. Uh, that's a weird conclusion, but and I understand that's not what he meant. Obviously, he has so much faith in what Brother James Knox writes that if you disagree with it, you must just disagree with the word of God. But you cannot accuse somebody of not agreeing with the word of God when they uh, disagree with a book that is not the word of God. Because did you know that there are many things in this book, too, that, uh, that, that are written that many pre-tribbers would also disagree with? Do those people not believe the word of God? Do those people question God's word? So, uh, again, you know... I don't know if Pastor Knox is his pastor too, but hey, listen, just admit, I've got so much faith in my pastor that anyone who would disagree with him, I believe disagrees with the word of God. But don't accuse them. Don't, don't just say, you know, they don't believe the word of God. Or, that's, that's ridiculous. So you heard it from him. He didn't watch the video, but he would not watch me because I disagree with the word of God. So I hope all you pre-tribbers out there, you better agree with all of this too, or this guy's going to accuse you of not agreeing with the word of God. And I would almost guarantee that if I had 10 different honest pre-tribbers come on here, that there's stuff they would not agree with in here, specifically in the one chapter that I referenced, because some of the arguments that he used, they were, they were clearly bad, bad arguments. And I'm thankful for honest pre-tribbers out there Again, the, that they are they're, they're the exception who will admit when you're like, yeah, that's a dumb teaching. That is that is a bad proof. We shouldn't use that. Um, so I but I would venture to say that probably most pre-tribbers do not completely agree with this book. But yet would this guy say they disagree with the word of God. So I just thought that was funny. Now, here's the part, though, that I want you to watch, because I'm going to get accused of several things in here that you can go back and watch the video. It just didn't happen. And again, when I, and I'm watching this, I'm thinking, why would he say this? And it is, it's pride and insecurity. So let's go ahead and watch. This guy, I listened to him a little bit. I couldn't stomach listen to any more because the name calling started getting bad. Uh, pastor, uh, I mean, you want to call him a pastor? Okay, if he's a pastor, he did his due diligence. He truly, you know. Okay. Was so he couldn't stomach me. That's fine. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But go watch that video, okay? I am real. I am blunt, okay? Me being blunt, me stating facts, or even what I believe are facts, that is, these things are not attacks, for one, and there was no name calling. Go back. I'm going to get accused of calling James Knox stupid and an idiot, okay? Now, I went back and I watched that video. I watched the whole thing because I, I was like, I don't, I don't know why I would have done that because of the fact that I don't think James Knox is an idiot. I don't think he's stupid. So, uh, you know, again, there's been times before when people have accused me of things like this. And maybe I did think that person was stupid. And I was like, oh, did I say that? And but I'm like, but the, so I was worried that it might have happened because, yeah, I have thought that. But I hopefully would know better than to say that because that's really rude. And then a lot of times I go back. And no, I didn't say any of those things, but it was maybe they read my mind or my body language. They could tell I thought that. Uh, but here's the thing with James Knox. I knew I didn't feel that way. So I'm like, there's no way I said that. I don't think that. I just had a pastor recently. He, he had uh, brought up a time and I, I had to talk to this guy because he was somebody that got addressed in the program. And so like I do, as much as I didn't want to talk to this individual, I talked to this individual. And he starts bringing up all this weird stuff from the past. And he brought up the time I made fun of this evangelist. And I thought, I told him, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, what are you talking about? I've never made fun of that evangelist. And it's not that I remember every conversation I ever had. But here's the thing. 
I this evangelist he was referring to, I like. I've never had a negative thought towards this guy. So I'm like, why would I make fun of this guy? And then he started to elaborate on what it was. And, and I was like, and it, it, it never happened. I was like, no, I was making fun of you in that situation. But no, that, and then, and then he admitted, well, yeah, yeah, I, no, that's, that's true. It's like, don't just accuse people of stuff like that. So again, one of the reasons I knew this wasn't true when I was listening to it, even before I went back and checked, just in case, is because I don't have these terribly negative thoughts towards James Knox. I don't think he's an idiot. So I wasn't sure why I would have said it because on this program, I say what I mean. And I will admit, sometimes I filter things in that I don't say maybe negative things, you know, that I would, but I knew I didn't have those negative feelings towards Pastor Knox. So I knew this guy was out to lunch, but I thought maybe, and so if you go back and watch the whole video, um, the word idiot is never used one time in the whole podcast. The word dumb and stupid, those words were used. Uh, but it was when Pastor Knox was addressing a bad teaching. And I was agreeing with him that that teaching is dumb, that that teaching is stupid. Not that his teaching was dumb and his teaching was stupid. No, that a false teaching that he mentioned was dumb and stupid. So that for sure is not me calling him stupid. I'm literally agreeing with what he is saying is ridiculous, is dumb and stupid. So that was actually when I was agreeing with him. The closest thing that you can find on that podcast, if you go and listen to it, is there is one time with one of his arguments that he brings up that I said, based on the claim, I, was, I said, that's crazy. Now, this was not me saying Pastor Knox was crazy because if you keep on listening, it is very obvious that I'm saying, I don't believe Pastor Knox thinks this. In fact, I, I, and so I go through the whole thing and I, and I kept saying, I'll bet if I asked Pastor Knox this question that he would agree with this, I don't think he thinks that. However, I was showing how a statement that he made, he was misdefining something and therefore what he was saying based on the accurate definition is, is crazy. But I said, I don't think he believes that and I would love to have him on the program to ask him about that because I guarantee you he doesn't think that. You know why? And you know why I said that? Because I don't think he's crazy. A statement in the book I said is crazy, If, def but if that's if it's defined properly. I said, I don't think Pastor Knox believes that. So there are no insults. Me saying something is wrong. Me saying that's incorrect. Me saying that's a contradiction. These are not insults. Those are just stating facts. So uh, you, you can't be sensitive like that. You can't be, you can't be sensitive, all right? I'll, I'll allow somebody to critique you without trying to play the victim and act like you're being attacked for standing for truth. So let's go and listen more. the Bible, read over the Bible, went to some classes, learning about the Bible, but then had a whole bunch of bad teaching, right? Nobody oh, yeah, taught. and I meant to say, too, that he said all this, too, after, like, you know, should we even call him a pastor? Uh, that sounds like an insult, so you're, he's acting like, should this guy even be a pastor? Is he even qualified to be a pastor? So you're calling my qualifications into question because of my bad spirit and my name calling and insults that never happened. Go watch that video and see if I have a bad spirit. Now, I guarantee you I made him uncomfortable because it is, it is very uncomfortable being corrected. Reproof often makes people uncomfortable unless they are a wise man a wise man somebody who has confidence somebody who has humility they welcome it but those who are proud those who are insecure makes them very uncomfortable and so yeah again you can go watch that video and see if there's a bad spirit in there Absolutely, there is not. Him how to control his spirit about name calling other pastors. Amen. Nobody taught him about having grace with people that have a different difference of a point of view than he does. Um, I don't feel a need to attack this guy. You know, if he did. believes the gospel, praise the Lord. Why am I going to attack him? But I, I tell you what, I will do. 
I will defend the Bible's position on the pre-tribulational rapture, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to name call this guy and call him an idiot and all that, like he was calling Brother James, uh, I, my pastor. And I, I, I kind of resent that. I, I really do, because if we're all if, if we're saved, members of the body of Christ, and we may if we may be messed up on some certain doctrines, right? Now, obviously, you know, I'm under Pastor Knox. I'm not messed up on any doctrine, okay? But, but anyways, you, you, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I'm just joking. I'm just joking around with that, okay? Uh, we all got things we need to work on, all right? We all, all of us do. And just because you may have something worked out better than I do spiritually, it doesn't make me an idiot. It just means I haven't learned that much yet, or I haven't committed to God in that area of my life yet. It doesn't make me an idiot. So why would you name call me? And vice versa, I wouldn't name call you. Maybe I'm I'm, you know, better off in certain areas spiritually in my life than you are. And maybe there's some things in the Bible that I've learned practically in my life that, and there's doctrinal things that I've learned in the Bible that I may have better than you. And I'm not going to name call you and say, you know, you're, you're stupid idiot, this and that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have grace with you. I'll be like, Hey, you know, I don't know what he, what you believe about this, but here's what I've learned. You know, that's a good way to approach it. And, and without name calling, somebody actually might want to learn from you. But in this case, this guy was just all over my pastor. And, uh, and to, to be honest, I don't think he's qualified to do a video like that on my pastor that's been preaching probably longer than I've been alive. So um, somebody like my pastor who has lived the scriptures more than I, I ever could, somebody that, somebody that I respect because he leads by example, and he does his ministries. He doesn't back off. He does more than what, he, what he's supposed to do. And I'm around his work ethic a lot of times. And he runs circles around me. And I'm just amazed at his integrity in his desire to be faithful to the Word of God and the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ and his faithfulness to witness preach on the streets, to preach at different churches, to go out there. And he's got, he's got experience to back himself up. He's got, uh, if you look into his life as a bystander, you can see the evidence of his faithfulness in his life. So to me, when somebody name calls my pastor, these are big words, because if you've never spent a day with my pastor, you just need to close your mouth. You just need to close your mouth. I'm trying to be nice on this broadcast because I am not a hate. Okay. So again, several things. If you, now I, I encourage everyone to go back and watch the video I did debunking this. I said in the beginning of the video, I don't know Pastor Knox. I, I, I don't know him personally. I know very little about him. I acknowledge that. And so again, and you go watch, I never called him a stupid idiot. I didn't call him any names. And so he, but he's acting like because he's just such this great man, he's not allowed to be questioned. He can write out a book. He put, you know, you write these books to put them out publicly, trying to influence, and no one's allowed to critique them because he's such a great man. And I'm not saying he isn't. I mean, he very well might be. A lot of great men that I believe love the Lord are pre tribbers. So because he's a great man, because he's a good man, I can't question one of his writings. That's really strange. That's very convenient for him to be, because he has all these things that you're giving him. Not Pastor Knox has not given himself these things, but he, this guy is, that no one could even question this guy. And you know, this is the kind of stuff we get accused of in the IFB, where no one can question the man of God. No one can challenge the man of God. Well, what if the man of God is wrong about something? What if he messes up? What if something he says does not line up with the Bible? Nobody can say anything because he's got good character. I, I never called his character into question. I never called his qualifications to be a pastor into question. This guy's doing that with me. This guy's talking. And, and this guy, on another part of the video, he said he watched some of the video that I did. He said he, he, you know, he could barely stomach it. But this guy obviously watched it so good, he saw things that weren't even there in his mind. He saw things... And listen, that video has not been edited. I didn't take anything out of that video. That video is as it was uploaded and he's just making, making things up. And so go watch that video. See if I do anything to challenge the qualifications of Pastor Knox or his character or anything like that. No, I addressed the arguments in his book. Are we really at a place in the IFB where no one can question 
No one can challenge the teachings of someone else in the IFB. That's very strange. I don't think this guy would claim that. But that's essentially what he is saying in this video, getting all dramatic, just going on and on. Like, I'm just this terrible person. And he does. He sets Pastor Knox up to be a saint. And maybe he is. But then it makes me look like a devil because the people watching his video think I've been calling Pastor Knox a stupid idiot and things like that. And I haven't. Didn't It didn't happen. It only happened in this guy's mind. And I believe that what happened is he watched me debunk the ridiculous arguments in this video. And maybe he thought those things about Pastor Knox. And he is projecting that on me. And I can't help it. But, you know, the arguments were bad. And that is not an attack. That is me stating a fact about uh, that I, uh, me saying he's wrong. It's not an attack. That's me stating a fact, and I gave basis for it. This is wrong. This doesn't work. This is inconsistent. So, got to get got to get over this insecurity. Let's go and watch the rest of this. Spiteful person, but it it really in, inflames me when somebody attacks my pastor and they don't know the first thing about him. So, I'm just gonna say that much, okay? So. Be gracious when you do a broadcast. People will listen to you if you're gracious with them. And even though somebody might have something wrong. I am gracious, which is why people watch this podcast. He's right. If you're gracious, people will listen to you. And that is why people listen to this program. I have a lot of pre-trivers. I've got preterists. And I'm pretty mean to the preterists to a certain extent. But I am, I am gracious because their teaching is so bad. I, you know, I could get, it would be very easy for me to get in the flesh and to say words like, you know, I, I, I won't, you know, like stupid and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, if I, especially if I have them on the program, I want to hear them out. I want to show respect. I want to have an honest conversation and nobody profits when I am just throwing out insults and things. So I am gracious and I have been accused of being gracious by preterists, many of them by amillennialists by pre-tribbers, by dispensationalists. Say, I, I've had them on this program. People love coming on this program because they will get a fair hearing on this program. Now, a lot of people don't like that, you know, after they come on the program, I don't always just go along and, and, and completely agree with them. You know, I think that's what they hope are going to happen. And it doesn't happen, but they don't hate me after that because they know I gave them a fair hearing. So this guy's absolutely right. If you're gracious... People will listen to you. And that is why people listen. That is why this is the podcast that everyone's talking about. And so I have displayed, and there are many out there who will witness that I am those things that you described that you said I should be. And they will also agree, and the pre-tribbers would many pre-tribbers would agree, the ones who are not full of pride and insecurity, that the negative things you're saying about me are not true. They vehemently disagree with my position, but uh, they would listen to that video and not think I insulted or attacked. At attacked. That is so weak to say you're being attacked. My teacher gave me an F in school. She attacked me. No, you, you got an F. You answered all the questions wrong. That's not an attack. That's her being fair. That's her being accurate. We are behaving like children here. How is this guy a staff member on a church? You say you shouldn't say... He's the one's like, I don't know how this guy's a pastor, you know, and then, but then he proceeds to show all these things that I never did. So, and then he do, says, this pastor should be this way. And that is the way I am. And everyone agrees. So be gracious. And you'll, what you'll find is the more grace that you have with people, but you're, you're not, you're not compromising truth just because you're gracious. But there is a way you can deliver something and still be honest and true to the word of God. And, and I think perfected. that's so, if there's anything you can get out of this broadcast tonight, I think it would be that, is, is love the brethren. You know, we may not be, have the same, you know, ideas in the Bible about every minute thing in the Bible, but the, but the thing that we're supposed to matter about, the thing that's supposed to matter to us about is the unity that we have in Jesus Christ and His finished cross work. And that should overcome the, the the bounds of our our pet doctrines and stuff like that. We we need to we need to get over our pride. 
So hopefully, I hope you get something out of this because people right away, they see a video and, and they may not agree with everything Brother Ed and Brother Mike say on the broadcast. Well, we, we better bring them to the table so Brother Mike and Brother Ed can attack them. Well, we don't want to attack them. Um, if they got the gospel right, I mean, let's just talk about the gospel alone. Do they have the gospel right? All right. So I just, you know, just want to say that much. I mean, if, if we have a difference in the gospel, then that's something to divide over because there's only one way to get to God. And that's through Jesus Christ and his finished cross work. And that's it. It's not by your works, not by good deeds, not by water baptism, not by speaking in tongues, not by being religious, not by doing all these different things, right. like keeping the Sabbath day and all that. None of that stuff is going to save you. You've got to only trust in Christ. See, and that's where we're at. That's where we're going to we're going to pick and choose our battles right there. And our battle is the gospel has to be Christ died for your sins, rose again a third day. Anything other than that. Well, you got to believe Jesus died for your sins, but you also got to believe in the post-trib rapture of the church. Well, no, I don't agree with the post-trib rapture of the church. I don't believe that exists at all. I believe in the pre-trib rapture of the church. But I am not going to sit here and tell you that you're going to hell because you believe in the post-trib rapture of the church. Do you understand? You got to say things like this because this is how people act. Even even in our post or, or even in our, our, our pre-trib rapture, you know, crowd, uh, pre-trib rapture people, sometimes they get so dogmatic. They're like, there's no way a post-trib guy could ever be saved. But the post-trib guys say, well, wait a minute. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, rose again the third day. I only believe in that. And, and, and you're going to sit there and tell him, well, wait a minute. No, you believe in the post-trib. You're going to hell still. <laughs> you, you better. So you got to watch out. You can still be right in some areas and then be wrong in other areas. So what we want to do is be right in as much as we can, right? Including our spirit, the way we act and respond to people. I think you, you got to walk away with that tonight if you get anything. Now. All right. So I agree with everything you said right there. And this is, again, yeah. I I do not believe pre-trib people are going to hell. I was I got saved years and years before I became post-trib. So and I am also somebody who practices fellowshipping with pre-tribbers. I have pre-tribbers preach in my church. I get along with them great because again, the gospel is the most important to me and I agree with everything you said about the gospel. I again, and you know, again, I've not heard Pastor Knox's gospel presentation or anything like that. But uh, from what I understand, you know, he preaches the gospel. And so I, I'm for him. But, and, and that's why, too, when I address things, like books like this, I do, I do believe that your average IFB guy is an error when it comes to their eschatology. But I don't hate him because of it. I do want to challenge them. And so I do it in a gracious way. I do it in a loving way. I do... I don't try to call them names and things like that. And it just never happened. So, again, I genuinely believe that this guy thought he was telling the truth. And I think that when he got an email from me, he did. He just saw, like, I'm just this enemy. And therefore, even though I gave him his phone, my phone number and everything, he was not going to contact me because he just sees me as an enemy. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know my character. You know, he, he knows enough to call my qualifications into question, you know, because I'm not pre-trib, which is kind of, which is kind of ridiculous. So the thing is when people are, I believe this is a huge problem in the IFB specifically around eschatology because of the fact that they are wrong. And I think they're realizing that more and more, and it's just a lot easier to just play the victim and to just kind of circle the wagons than to actually look somebody in the eye and address some of these things and to and to actually be challenged. And one of the things that people often do is then they do red herring fallacies. They try to distract. Now, I'm not they went and they discussed certain things about this idea of multiple raptures in there. And they he debunked one of my arguments. Anybody who would go and watch my video and his video would see he did not debunk it at all. Okay, first, the first thing he did, uh, he brought up my argument about the time of Jacob's trouble, how it already happened. And he presented it like I was saying the time of Jacob's trouble had already happened in before Jeremiah prophesied. And he's like, no, Je he's saying it's going to happen. How are you? How can you say it was past? Well, it was going to happen when Jeremiah prophesied this to Israel. That's what I was saying in there. And here's the thing. I do believe there's some 
future application you can make. The whole point of me bringing up uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, how it had a fulfillment in Jeremiah's day was because of the fact people will use that title, time of Jacob's trouble, as proof it's about the Israel, just Israel, not the church. And that's just a terrible argument. So this guy was acting like I was teaching that when Jeremiah gave that prophecy, it had already happened. Okay, So obviously, uh, either he I don't know if that was an intentional misrepresentation or he misunderstood. Again, sometimes we teach things bad and people get the wrong idea, you know, and uh, but uh, I went back and listened to what I said. I wasn't even close to saying what this guy said that I said. But then just briefly, I do want to mention this. Whenever people bring up this multiple rapture thing, and this is what, what they spent a lot of the video doing. It, everybody knows it's ridiculous to teach that there are two raptures coming in the future. We instinctively know that there is something wrong with that idea of two raptures coming in the future. But people can't get around the fact that in Matthew 24, when we see Jesus coming in the clouds and gathering up people, that that looks a lot like 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Can't get around that. So they have separated the events. As ridiculous as that sounds... The way they make it sound better is they will show there's a bunch of raptures in the Bible. Now, I don't even know which all ones these guys claim, but all to, all, often when people do that, they will bring up Enoch. Enoch got translated. He got taken to heaven. That's a rapture. Elijah, he got caught up in heaven in a whirlwind. That's a rapture. We've got Jesus ascending up into heaven. You can say, that's a rapture. We've got Philip. Uh, after preaching the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, all of a sudden he's in another place. You know, that's a rapture. We've got the uh, John getting caught up. Uh, he's called up in Revelation chapter 4. That's a rapture. We've got the two witnesses in Revelation. That's a rapture. And so they'll, they'll go to any place where there is a catching away. Okay, And nobody ever brings up, how about the one with, I think it was Ezekiel, where an angel took him by a lock of his hair and lift him up between heaven and earth. That's our catching away by the hair. That's an interesting story, but no. Okay. I get it. You can find other place in the Bible where people are caught up where there is a catching away. We are talking about the return of Christ. We are talking about the coming of the Lord, which is what it's referred to in first Thessalonians four and Matthew 24. We are talking about our gathering together unto him, which is mentioned in second Thessalonians chapter two and also in Matthew chapter 24. We are why we are talking about an event where Christ comes with his saints, which we see spelled out in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 4, how Christ is coming with his saints, even them that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And in Ma and, uh, Matthew 24, see the same thing, gathering is like. So again, what, what they're doing with this multiple rapture thing, they're making they're trying to make it not seem ridiculous that we're kind of repeating a major event. Because here's, here's what the event should be called, the resurrection, the resurrection. But nobody wants to call it that, even though that's what they called it throughout the Bible. You know why? Because if it's the resurrection, then the only way you can find to separate the resurrection is you have the first resurrection in Revelation chapter 20, and then the rest of the dead living after the thousand years, also in Revelation 20. We do see a distinction between the resurrection of the just and of the unjust. What we don't see are multiple resurrections of the dead in the, uh, of, of the saints. And then, and so these are red herring arguments and that's what they spent a lot of time doing. And this is what you have to do when you're wrong. And as a result of that, get, I'll, I'll, I think most BAPs are gonna continue being this way. They're gonna have to have a persecution complex. They're not going to be able to be aggressive. They're not going to be have the boldness, most of them, to come on this program and programs like this. They're not even going to have the boldness after they have publicly called somebody out to even have a private conversation with them. You know why? Because they can't handle being challenged. They see every challenge as an attack. They see questions as an attack. And if you can go back and watch that whole video that I did on, on that blessed hope and to call that an attack, you are weak and you are insecure, that is not an attack. It was a critique. It was a reproof. It was a correction. And so we have to be able to do this in the theological world and in the independent fundamental Baptist world. 
in the preacher world, you guys got to do a better job of calling out your own on these things. It's making all of you look bad and weak. And I think it's happening because you're wrong and you know it. And so how about you at least start exert showing some Christian character and just telling the truth. You know, he gave 19. I would say I probably thoroughly debunked more than half of them. Some maybe it's questionable. But either way, it's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we've only got nine or whatever. And I, I, I forgot how many. But just just admit that sometimes you get some things wrong. It's not that hard. And if somebody points it out, they're not attacking you. They're correcting you. Let's not act like the fools in Proverbs that can't handle reproof, that can't handle instruction, that can't even handle rebuke. A wise man can handle rebuke. They will welcome it because they don't want to be wrong. And so, again, this guy is not accountable to me. I have no authority over him, but he shouldn't have invoked my name and made accusations of things that didn't happen that is easily easy to prove did not happen. And so go check it out. And you know what? Let me just say this too. This is another sign of insecurity. Is uh, I would I would encourage people to encourage him on the uh, on that video. Leave some comments. Uh, don't don't go on there being belligerent and calling him names and things because then he'll think he's being attacked. But you know what? Encourage him to repent. He'll probably delete the comments though. He will probably delete the comments because that is kind of the mo of the insecure and the proud. Uh, but it, but either way, uh, he does need to repent of this. This was wrong. He should be ashamed of himself. And uh, Pastor Knox said, I, I, don't, I don't disrespect him, but I, 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 would, I do have a problem with one of his staff members uh, doing this type of thing. And I hope Pastor Knox doesn't just see me as an enemy because I'm a post-tribber, and therefore it's okay for his guy uh, to lie and slander. That's a shame if that kind of thing. And again, on this program... I, I le let people leave comments rebuking me, telling me off all the time. I just had multiple comments on my Sunday night sermon that apparently I, I didn't do a good job maybe presenting some things. Uh, I was, was accused of word salad and things like that. Hey, sometimes as a preacher, we do a bad job communicating. And, it's just, and so, you know, when I saw those comments, it was like, well, I, I haven't gone back and listened to the sermon, but I was like, it was one of those sermons where I had way more than I uh, that I wanted to cover than I was able to uh, in an hour, and maybe I did a bad job presenting. That happens. Doesn't mean the premise is wrong, but sometimes, even in a doctrine where we're right, we have poor presentations where we fail to clearly communicate something. And you know, when I see stuff like that, I don't look at these people and think, oh, they're just haters. No, maybe I did a bad job. That is very possible. I have preached many sermons where I went back and listened. And I was like, dude, I failed at getting that point across. I was right in what I was trying to present, but I did a bad job in presenting it. And because I am secure in my position, because I know that I do do my best, that I do put study into it, it doesn't, I don't get too freaked out if I just do a bad presentation. It just motivates me to do a little better next time. So, We've got to get more of that in the IB world. But anyway, thank you all for watching this. Let's call on Brother Ed to uh, repent and apologize for the lies and slander. And uh, we do not need this type of thing in the IB world. It makes all of us look bad when we do this kind of thing. So thank you all for watching this. God bless you.